Let's put our hands together one more time for what has transpired already in the presence of God. Praise God for worship. Praise God for an atmosphere where worship can go forward. Well, this is our third Sabbath of our Black History Month, so good to see so many of you donned in your African apparel. Amen. We should do this more often, not just in February. Amen. I want to see more of it throughout the year. Every month is Black History Month. Amen. God is good. Uh, just remember Pastor Edmonds as he is away, as well as Pastor Johnson. They both have speaking engagements. So just remember to keep them in prayer. Last week, Pastor Myron set us straight in Jesus' name. Isn't it a strong word about the Holy Spirit? And he basically said that we don't know who we are until the Holy Spirit fills us. We don't have our identity together until the Holy Spirit is with us. Well, today we're going to continue um, in our know your stuff. Somebody shout know your stuff. Yeah, we believe that when you know the truth, that is what enables us to be free. Um, and so we're taking our time systematically throughout the year to reveal truth to us so that we can truly be set free. Amen. I believe that if you grab hold of every word that we give week after week, you will be free in Jesus' name. These are life-changing messages. I believe that if you come expectant, come ready to receive, your life will be forever changed. Somebody say amen. So we're excited to see what God is going to do in our midst today. I want to thank our ushers. I want to thank our praise team. I want to thank our deacons for their continual service. Let's put our hands together for them. As in, let's put our hands together for them, the media team as well, for what they continue to do week after week so that we can have a powerful worship experience in a cafeteria. Amen. <laughs> God is good. Let's go to the book today, Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. I covet your prayers. This is um, a very sobering word, and it's a needed word, and we need the Holy Spirit to be definitely with us as we traverse this text. So I'm asking our prayer warriors even now to be in an attitude of prayer as we go into the word today. Galatians chapter 5, and I'm going to start reading at verse 16 in your hearing. It says, I say then, walk in the Spirit. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But, somebody shout but. <laughs> the fruit of the spirit is love. Let's say these together. Joy. What else? Uh-huh. Yes. Faithfulness. Okay. Self-control. Against such there is Verse 24, let's read this one together as well. And those who are Christ have what? The flesh with its passions and desires. Now, if we, let us also, let us not become provoking one another, envying one another. Somebody shout amen for the reading of God's word. I'd like to borrow my title this morning from one of our well-loved black singing evangelists, Sister Jill Scott. Are you praying, Sister Clara? 
because the title of this message this morning is let's take a long walk our older folk may not know where I'm going with that but I know my Millennials and my let's take a long walk after dark around the park yeah, yeah. Elder Pooh said oh I know that song yeah he, ain't, he said I ain't that old <laughs> Look it up later. Jill Scott has a song called, Let's Take a Long Walk. Lord, have your way in this place. Remove all distractions. Come on in, Lord. Do what you need to do is my prayer in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. Praise the Lord. Go to the next slide for me. This is Travis Kaufman. And uh, just this past Thursday, some of you may have heard this in the news, he was identified as the man who won a fight to the death struggle last week after a mountain lion ambushed him in Colorado. He was on a hike, right? And when he heard the rustling of the pine needles behind him, at first he thought it was just a small like squirrel or something, but when he looked back, he saw that it was a mountain lion. So he yelled, threw his arms up to scare off the lion, right? But that didn't work. What ended up happening when he threw up his arms, the, the lion pounced at him and launched his jaws around his wrists as he tried to protect his face. The both of them ended up tumbling down a slope into a wrestling match, this lion and Trevor. He tried to use rocks to get him off of him. He tried to use sticks to get him off of him. I'm going somewhere today. And force that lion off of him, but none of that worked. All the while, his arm is still trapped in the animal's mouth. Kaufman realized that he had to do something drastic. He had to do something out of the ordinary because this animal wasn't going to let up. I feel like preaching today. This animal wasn't going to let up even after he hit the lion in the head with the rock, even after he tried to poke him with a stick, couldn't let him go. So you know what he had to do? He managed to get his foot pressed down on the mountain lion's neck until the animal suffocated and finally let him go. I love what the wildfire or wildlife experts say they said the runner, he had to fight because he would not have made it if he ran from what was trying to kill him. I feel like saying it one more time. The experts said it's a good thing that he actually started to fight because if he had started to run, the, the, he wouldn't have made it because what was trying to kill him would have caught up to him and took him out. He had no choice but to turn around and face that lion. Oh, I have a church that's with me today. See, for many of us, that mountain lion is like our flesh. And when I'm talking about the flesh today, Holy Spirit, please have your way. I'm talking about our old selves. I'm talking about our old condition. I'm talking about our old sinful way of life that keeps coming back and trying to kill us, trying to take us out. Many of us think if we run away from our flesh, that it's not going to chase us down. Many of us think that if we don't face it, it's just going to go away. But what I'm learning, what I'm learning is that even though we're saved, even though we believe that Jesus is Lord, even though we believe that we, you know, we've been saved, our flesh is just like that mountain lion. And the stuff that we've been delivered from is not going to let us go. The stuff that we've been holding on to is going to keep fighting against us. Our desires for love, our desires for acceptance, our desires for significance being fulfilled through fleshly desires keeps fighting to stay alive in our hearts. Do I have a witness in this place? And it's not until we take some drastic measures, God, I feel you. It's not until we decide that we are going to suffocate our flesh. 
until we decide that we're going to mortify our flesh and bring our flesh under control, that's when we see breakthrough. Who am I preaching to today? Grace community, I'm bringing this message to us today because we need to hear it. We are on the trajectory to do great and mighty exploits for the cause of God. But we have to get our flesh under control. We have to stop allowing our flesh to win. I'm talking from the pastors to the elders, to the deacons, to the usher board, to the praise team, to the musicians, to the media team, to the outreach, everybody under the sound of my voice, if you are connected to this community of faith, if we're going to go to another level of God, if we're going to experience God's power in new and exciting and powerful ways, we have to bring our flesh under control. And before you think, well, she's not talking to me. I'm good. I'm good. She cannot be. This is for the sister on the road beside me. This is for the brother behind me. This can't be for me. Um, every wrong action, every wrong word, every wrong idea, every wrong reaction, every wrong emotion, every wrong attitude comes straight from our flesh. Every difficulty in life you are experiencing is a result of our humanity. The reason we have anxiety, it's the flesh. The reason why we're dealing with terrible relationships, it's the flesh. The reason why we're having difficulty in our marriages, it's the flesh. The reason why we're having difficulties in our family, it's the flesh. The reason why we have difficulty co cooperating with people in our ministries, cooperating with people on our jobs, it's the flesh. It's the flesh. The reason why we still have pride, it's the flesh. All sin of every form, all wrong emotions, wrong attitudes, it all starts with the flesh. But I came to preach to those who want to be set free today. I said, I came to preach to those that want to be set free today. I said, I came to preach to those that want to be set free today. I said, I came to preach to those that want to be set free today. So if you don't mind, let's systematically take our time and look at the works of the flesh. That could habitually, routinely be in our lives because once you know, and this is why, this is why I need the prayer warriors, that's why we need everybody to be praying today. Because, you know, listen, I know, <laughs> Sister Bozeman knows, Sister Bozeman, we, we, we're, we're prayer partners. I know when the enemy wants, doesn't want a message to go forward, he attacks the preacher that's about to bring it forward. And so I know that this message is about to upset the enemy. Because we're about to reveal, we're about to expose the flesh. And the enemy doesn't like when he's exposed. But in order for that to happen, though, we have to have it exposed in order that we can be set free from it. The truth sets us free. Somebody shout amen. Holy Spirit, be with us now. Let's systematically go through all of them. First one, somebody shout adultery. Adultery, if you are struggling with adultery, that means that your flesh is is engaged in any sexual relationship that occurs outside the sanctified boundaries of marriage. That includes the fornication, that includes the porn, that includes all sexual immorality. Uncleanness. Uncleanness is you have unclean thoughts that produce unclean actions. Lasciviousness or lewdness, some other uh, uh, translation says, is another word for excessive. We're talking about you're primarily uh, excited, your flesh is excited about excessive consumption of food or wild, undisciplined living, especially marked by uncontrolled, unbridled sex. Have your way, God. We're talking about idolatry. Somebody shout idolatry. When you are engaged in idolatry, you're giving your complete undivided attention, your complete undivided devotion, passion, love, commitment to a person, to an object, or a person other than God. Witchcraft. Somebody shout witchcraft. Witchcraft. The Greek word for witchcraft is pharmakia, right? 
When I studied this, it wasn't what I thought it was initially. A Greek word for, is pharmakia. It's a word for medicines or drugs that inhibits a person's personality or changes their behavior. Watch this. When the church was being established in the first century, heathen worship was major. Heathen worshipers would come to the pagan temple to find relief from their sicknesses, find relief from their mental stress, find relief from their problems, and rather than confront their real needs and offer real solutions, the priests of those pagan religions, they would pour hello, they would pour drugs, those hallucinogenic drugs into vials of wine, stir it up and give it to the worshipers. Sent them home, tell them that they would feel better, but when the drug wore off, the worshipers still found themselves with the same problem or even worse. And in today's world, witchcraft still happens because it describes the flesh's attempt to avoid being confronted, to avoid being changed. See, the flesh doesn't like to be fixed. The flesh doesn't like to be changed. The flesh hates confrontation. The flesh would be rather told a lie than told the truth, right? Your flesh, even now, even now is trying to convince you that you ought to ignore your problem or cover it up with the way that you've been covering it up all these time, with the drugs and the alcohol or whatever else makes you feel better. And I'm not talking about medical advice today. I'm saying don't let your flesh tell you that you can keep covering up your problems with temporary solutions. That's witchcraft. Then there's hatred. Somebody shout hatred. Hatred are people who cannot get along with each other. You are operating in flesh if you have deep issues with somebody else. You're operating in flesh if you resent somebody. You're operating in flesh if you're holding a grudge against somebody. You're operating in flesh if you're complaining about somebody all the time. And it goes back to a very, very long time ago and you won't let it go. That's flesh. Then there's variance. Somebody shout variance. That's another word for division. Division. Division occurs because your flesh does not want to surrender. Your flesh does not want to admit that it's wrong. You don't want to let somebody else be right. <laughs> you don't want to compromise. Flesh, when you're in the flesh, you'd rather blow all the issues out of proportion and wreak havoc rather than let somebody just have their way. Somebody shout emulations. That is somebody who is jealous. You're in the flesh if you're resentful and you're filled with anger because another person has a, has a blessing that you wanted. And you're literally, I want that blessing. Somebody shout wrath. Somebody shout wrath. There's a few more. Wrath is you just have a temper above all tempers. The, 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 the Greek word is basically, it's like, uh, it's like a volcano that wants to erupt and suddenly it blows its top, scorching everything within its reach. You can't control your anger. You can't, you're trying to restrain it, but you can't. It's like you're boiling with anger all the time. Strife. Somebody shout strife. Somebody filled with strife is so bent on getting their way, getting what they want to the point that you're willing to do anything to get your way. You're willing to say anything to get your way. God help your people today. You're willing to sacrifice any standard to get your way. You're willing to sacrifice any rule. You're willing to sacrifice any relationship to achieve what you want. So consumed with yourself that you're blinded to the desires and ambitions of other people. Sedition. Somebody shout seditions. Another word is dissension. In other words, your flesh hates rules. Your flesh hates regulations. I appreciate the honesty, man of God. Your flesh uh, hates order that is imposed upon it. If someone who is disloyal or acts defiantly, it's somebody who acts disloyal or defiantly against an established authority. 99% of the world's conflicts are due to flesh that refuse to be told what to do and thus rises up to defy the authority or the rules it doesn't want to accept. And that's why we have all these wars happening today. Somebody was like, no, we're not about to do that. Let's go to war. 
And that happens amongst us as well. So when you find your flesh rising up in anger because your boss told you to do something you don't want to do, when your flesh rises up against one of your parents because they told you to do something that you don't want to do, when your flesh rises up against your spouse because they told you something that you don't want to do, help us wives and husbands, amen. I'm not married yet, but I was told that that happens a lot. When your flesh rises up because your pastor or your leader tells you something that you don't want to do, anybody that has authority in your life and you get upset when they exert that authority over you, it's time to kill the flesh. Somebody shout heresies. Heresies is when you are uh, dissident, when you are dogmatic. It's, uh, it's when you get into these cliques and you close yourself off to outsiders because you believe that you're more elite and that you're better than somebody else and you're exclusive and because you have this special truth, because you have this special truth, because we have this truth, we gonna keep it over here and unless you come with us, you can't be with us. That's flesh, saints of God. Couple more. Envying. Somebody shout envying. Every time you see a person that has an accomplishment that you want, every time you see somebody that has a relationship that you want, help me, Holy Ghost. Every time you see somebody that has a title that you want, Every time you see somebody that has stuff that you want, every time you see that person and you're seething about their success and you deeply resent that person's blessing and then you go a step further and you try to seize that blessing away from them and try to make it your own, that's flesh. Last two. Somebody shout drunkenness. Somebody shout drunkenness. Grace community. I'm not going to tell you not to drink or whether to drink or not to drink. That's not the point of this statement. What I am going to say, <laughs> I'm not going to call out who just said amen. <laughs> what I am going to say, I'm not even going to look at anybody when I say it. Okay, Elder Cox. Intoxication is what is being spoken about here. Drinking until you're drunk. This is to be avoided because when you are in a drunken, uh, drunken state, your flesh is just free to do whatever it wants. And I don't have to ask anybody to raise their hand to testify because anybody that's been drunk in this house knows exactly what I'm talking about. And when you're drunk, you just have the, you're just, I mean, flesh on display. That's why we say no to drunkenness. Last one, reveling. Somebody shout reveling. Revelings mean you're afraid of boredom. You're constantly thinking about what you can do to have fun or be entertained. <laughs> Let it go. There's nothing wrong with laughter, nothing wrong with having a good time, but you're in the flesh if you're always living for your next meal. You're in the flesh if you're always li uh, living for the next restaurant. You're in the flesh if you're always living for the next movie that's coming out. You're in the flesh if you're always living, living for the next vacation that you're about to take. You're in the flesh if you're living for the next time that you're going to do a, a Netflix binge or a Hulu binge. Like, I can't wait to get home and watch all ten episodes of whatever it is that you're watching. That's flesh. Amen. Father, have your way in this place. But I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm so glad that God has a solution for us today. I said, I'm so glad that God has a solution. Okay, release the tension. I'm so glad that God has a solution for us. Amen. Anybody glad that God is still a problem fixer? <laughs> Anybody glad that God is still in the business of fixing our flesh today? Hallelujah. You want, you want to know what the, the, what the solution is? Can I tell you what the solution is? To fight the works of the flesh. To fight our obsession with the works of the flesh. To fight our addictions. To fight our cycles. We need to start taking long walks in the spirit we need to start taking long walks in the spirit this is not an oversimplification 
This is not me trying to make it super simple. This is the word of God. This is the mind of God. The word says, walk in the spirit. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the spirit. And you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You can take all of your Christian living and reduce it down to this one truth. You can take all the commandments that you find in scripture and reduce it down to this one truth. If you just walk by the spirit, you will not carry out the lusts and desires of the flesh. That's it. Victory is sure. Somebody say amen. Victory will come because when we walk in the spirit, the spirit produces life. Notice I said the Holy Spirit produces life. Notice I said the Holy Spirit produces life. See, when it's the flesh, we're doing all the work. But when it's the spirit, God is doing the work. Oh, I wish I had more amens there. When it's the flesh, you're doing the work, right? But when it's the spirit, it's God doing the work through us. From a, from, from, from a consistent posture of faith, the spirit produces love. The spirit produces joy. The spirit produces peace. Hallelujah. The spirit produces patience. The spirit produces kindness. The spirit produces goodness. The spirit produces faithfulness. The spirit produces gentleness. The spirit produces self-control. Have you noticed that walking naturally produces a healthier body? Like if you decide that you're going to walk 30 minutes every day, after a while, you, stop dro you start dropping the weight off. Not because you're, you're forcing it to happen. It's just a byproduct of what happens when you start to walk. I wish I had somebody that would go where, where I'm going. You don't have to force it. It's just a byproduct. And the more we walk in the spirit, the more we naturally produce the fruit of the spirit. I'll say it again. The more we walk in the spirit, the more you naturally produce the fruit of the spirit. It's just going to come after you. It's just going to come out of you. you. You won't have to force it out of you. So let's look at how we overcome the works of the flesh, and then we'll spend some time in prayer and searching our hearts. Let's look at how we overcome the works of the flesh so that the Spirit can start producing his fruit in us. We must, first of all, embrace the command to walk. We must embrace the command to walk. Walking is not optional if we're going to stop the flesh in our lives. Now, when Paul used the Greek word for walk, it's a loaded word, right? I'm going to break it down. Two things he's talking about when he's talking about walking. First of all, the walk is like a stroll. Cullen always tells me that he just loves my walk. Why? It's just so slow. It's true. I do. I have a, I have a, just a, such a stroll. If you see me walking fast, it's usually because there's a reason. But if, if my, 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 my natural walk is just, I'm out here chilling. I ain't got nowhere to go. I'm just strolling. And when I read this text, I said, well, I'm in the spirit. <laughs> I'm never going to stop walking slow. Yeah, because the, the image that Paul is using here is that when you're walking in the spirit, it's like you're unbothered. It's a walk in the park. You know, Paul is saying... It's supposed to be like taking an unhurried, unbothered stroll in the park. See, we often think that the, the race is like, supposed to be like a sprint. We think it ought to be always be fast-paced all the time. We think that when we're walking in the spirit, it's supposed to be hurried and rushed. But many of us, we don't take the time to take it all in. Or we don't come prepared to take a long walk. Ladies, right? You can't walk really far if you got on certain types of shoes. Some of us, we don't come prepared to take a long walk. We come prepared, well, I got, I got about 30 minutes today, so the pastor better not go over any longer because that's how much time I have set aside to walk in the spirit today. Long, unhurried, unbothered. As long as it takes, God, to do what you need to do in me. Take some time and smell the roses in the spirit. Huh? Take some time and just have an, an un, just a long conversation with the Holy Spirit. 
I mean, sometimes we are just rushing, trying to get through it. But what Paul is saying, walk in the spirit. Don't run in the spirit. Don't rush in the spirit. Just take a, take a long walk in the dark, <laughs> around the park. We have what? Conversation and relaxation. Take a long walk in the spirit. I know I was preaching good. It's all right. Take a long walk in the spirit. Then, walking in the Spirit is repeated. That's the image that he's also trying to get out. It's a repeated walk. It's ongoing. You know when it snows? Go to the next slide. When it snows, oh, you weren't going with me. Uh, 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 okay, go back. There it is. Okay. Uh, I forgot to tell you when to change it. Uh, Walking in the spirit is repeated. So you know when it's snowing outside and when there's like a fresh amount of snow and it's like there's no path, right? Somebody will take their time, but somebody will go out in the snow and make a path for you. And then you see some footprints. So then you, oh, okay, let me go and, let me go and walk where they walk. And sometimes I literally walk where they walk, like, because I don't want to get my foot all caught up in the snow. And then as I'm walking through it, it becomes even more pronounced. And then somebody else will come, and then the path gets even more worn down because people are repeatedly walking in the same space. Are you with me, saints of God? And that's what it needs to be in the spirit. Uh, it has to be a well-worn path that's created because we are repeatedly walking the same path over and 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 over again. It's a daily, repeated, 365-day, 52-week-a-year type of walk. Let me give you another example. When we decide to eat breakfast every day, it's not like you can get seven bowls of cereal and eat them all on Sunday and expect to be filled for the rest of the week. You'll eventually be hungry by Tuesday. Some of y'all are hungry by Sunday night. Right? So it's great that we come to church on Sabbath and we rededicate our life to him. It's great that we have this worship experience and we get filled with the Holy Spirit and we feel renewed and exchanged and uh, uh, powered to do what we need to do. But that's not going to last till tomorrow. For some of us, that won't even last until we get to the parking lot. Do I have a witness in this place? The next step that you take is either in the flesh or it's in the spirit. And then you take another step in the spirit. And then you take another step in the spirit. And then you take another step in the spirit. Every time you're taking a step, it's either you're taking a step in the flesh or you're taking a step in the spirit. It's a repeated daily action. Now, pragmatically speaking, walking in the Spirit involves consistently, repeatedly studying the Word of God so that we know the mind of God. Colossians 3 says, let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly. Being filled with the Spirit is the same as letting the Word dwell in you richly. Because as you let the word dwell in you richly, the word then begins to dominate your thinking. And as it dominates your thinking, the word will now dominate your actions. And the only way you're going to walk routinely in the spirit of God is to have spiritual thoughts. I wish I had a church. The only way you're going to walk routinely in the spirit is when you have spiritual thoughts. And the only way you're going to have spiritual thoughts is when you commune with the living God in an attitude of prayer and being fed on the word of God Day after day after day after day after day after day after day. If you are still walking in the works of the flesh, it's probably because you're not walking unhurriedly or it's because you're not walking repeatedly. Next, we must embrace the conflict that comes when we walk. Verse 17 says, for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are what? Somebody shout contrary. Somebody shout contrary. Yeah, that means they're opposed to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. The reality is this, saints of God. The reality is simply this. Our flesh does not like what we're doing. All, our flesh doesn't like that we're doing all this walking in the spirit. And we have to learn just to accept that. Okay? We have to learn to accept that your flesh is not going to be happy with all this walking that you're doing. 
The flesh is literally opposed to this. Your flesh is going to rise up in protest. Your flesh is going to try and resist. I know I'm talking to somebody. The flesh is opposed to the good news of the gospel. Your flesh hates that you're under new management. Do I have a witness in this place? Your flesh hates that there's a new boss in town. Your flesh hates that it's no longer in control and calling the shots. Because now you're redeemed. Do I have a witness in this place? Now you're united with God in heavenly places. Now you've been bought with a price and you belong to God now. And your flesh hates that. Because it means that it's not in control anymore. So the main thing to learn from this text is that you're going to struggle. You are going to experience a struggle within. Because I know as we were reading through all those works of the flesh, I know somebody was in their mind like, <sighs> like you put your head down because you're like, I have so much of that left in me. I'm still struggling with a lot of these things. But I, I want to encourage you with this point right now. Just because you still have this part of you that's inside, on the inside of you still does not necessarily mean that you're not saved. Does not necessarily mean that you're not a Christian. Did you hear the word of the Lord? A Christian is not a person who experiences bad desires. Hear me. A Christian is not a person who experiences no bad desires. A Christian is a person who is at war. Oh, I wish I had somebody that would understand that if you are at war with your desires, if you're at war, that means that the power of the Holy Ghost is on the inside of you. Do we long for the day when our flesh will die? Yes. Do we long for the day when our flesh will be non-existent? Yes. Do we long for the day when our flesh will be utterly def defunct and done away with and only pure loving desires will fill our hearts all the days of our lives? Yes, yes, yes. But you know what's worse than a war? When there's no war at all. Because the flesh is in control. How you know you're walking in the spirit. It's not that you don't have any bad desires. But that you are opposed to those bad desires. And you are at war with those bad desires. Y'all don't want to be real today. Do I have anybody that's bold enough to say that there's some wars going on? <laughs> Like, do I have anybody that's like at war with fornication? You know what I'm saying? Like, do you, okay, I don't want to say that out loud. Anybody, anybody, anybody at war with some unclean thoughts? You know what I'm saying? Anybody at war with, with, with drunkenness every now and again? Anybody at war with being angry all the time? I want to encourage you, somebody. I want to encourage you because maybe two years ago, you probably were up in everybody's bed doing all kinds of foolishness, but now at least you're not doing it as often. That means the Holy Spirit is doing some work with you. Uh, there's a few of us that used to cuss all the time. Just a bad mouth. But as you look back over your life, well, look at this. I don't cuss as much. Not as much. That means the Holy Spirit is working in your life. Last month, you would blow the roof off with a temper tantrum. But now you find yourself walking it out. Like, okay, okay, okay taking a walk you're taking a walk you're taking a walk and you're not giving in to those anger anymore that means the holy spirit is working somebody used to pa used to smoke a pack of, of smokes every single day but now you at least you know every now and again you may take one you make two man that's progress and then you're gonna look down the road and realize that you're not smoking at all anymore the spirit is working against your flesh so we ought to give God praise that he's working. So we ought to give God praise that there's a war going on. So we ought to give God praise that there's a struggle going on. Because that means that the spirit has come to do battle with your flesh. Somebody shout hallelujah. And this is the good news. This is where you get to shout for real. This is the good news. When you take verse 16 and you take verse 17 together, the main point is not that there's going to be a war. The main point is that there's going to be victory. You missed it. It's not that the, the point is, is that your flesh is not going to win. Your flesh is already defeated. I wish I had somebody that would be excited. Your flesh is already defeated, saints 
presence of God. If that's what the text is trying to say, go ahead and dance, women of God. If that's what the text is trying to say, your flesh is dead already. You are going to win this battle against your flesh. Because when you walk in the spirit, you will not give in to the desires of your flesh. It's a promise. It's a promise. It's a promise. It's a message of hope. The more you walk, the more your flesh gets weaker. So even though there's a war, they're not going to win. Because the spirit is going to win. That's a good place to give God praise. That blessed me this week, y'all. That blessed me. There's going to be a war, but the flesh isn't going to win. Thank you, Jesus. Lastly, we got to embrace the connection that reflects our walk. The connection. There's a connection. There's a connection. There's a connection. If Paul had said, well, look at verse 18. It says, if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. If you're led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. By the way, I encourage you to memorize this. This whole, like, as much of this as you can. Very encouraging. If you're led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now, if Paul had said, if you follow the Spirit, you're not under the law, he would not have been lying. He would have been telling the truth. But he uses the passive voice. I love English. He uses the passive voice, if you're led by the Spirit, he uses that to emphasize that it's the Spirit working, not us. I will say it again. If he said, you follow the Spirit, that's what I have to do. But he intentionally says, be led by the Spirit, which emphasizes what the Spirit does and not us. Ooh, I like that. Uh, can I borrow you two boys real quick? Can I borrow you? Yeah, pay attention. Come on. <laughs> <coughs> All right. I need y'all to do an illustration. I need you to run as fast as you can around through here. And you're going to try and catch him. <laughs> Look at him. He's like, nope, not going to do it. I look clean today, Pastor. I'm not trying to sweat myself out. Do your best. And I'm going to give you a head start. So I'm going to count like to 10. You're going to run as far away as you can. Then you're going to try and catch up to him. Okay? Ready, set, go. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, go. Try and catch him. Try and catch him. Go. Come on. Try and catch him. Oh, Lord. Run one more round. Run. Come on. Try and catch him. Try and catch him. Okay, stop. stop. Help him, Lord. See, this is not how the spirit works. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. The spirit is not a fast runner you have to try and keep up with in your own strength. You hear what I'm saying? The spirit's not going to leave you to try and keep up with the law by running on your own. I wish I had a church that would get excited me right? You don't have to live in oppression. You don't have to live under punishment because you keep failing trying to keep up with the spirit by trying to keep the law in your own strength. Okay, now you stand in front of him or you stand behind him. Hang on to him now. Just, just hug, hug your brother. Come on. Hug him. Now y'all start walking. Now y'all start moving. Come on. Zigzag a little bit. Zigzag a little bit. No matter where he go, come on. No matter where the spirit goes, I wish I had a church. See, when you're connected with the spirit, when you're connected with the spirit, you go where the spirit leads you. Oh, I said, when you're connected to the spirit, wherever the spirit leads, you're going to follow. I wish I had a church that would get excited. Come on, saints of God. Stay connected. Stay connected. Y'all can sit down. Somebody shout hallelujah. Thank y'all. <laughs> it does not mean that you don't have to fulfill the law anymore. What it means 
is that the spirit is going to lead you in such a way that you only produce what the law requires. You don't have to worry about trying to keep up with the law. When you're connected to the spirit, the spirit is going to help you to produce exactly what you need to keep the law. Love, joy, peace, patience, long-suffering, patience, self-control, gentleness. The spirit is going to help you produce those things. And the more you produce those things, you naturally will keep the law. Led by the Spirit, not under the law. Because the Spirit is going to produce what he needs to so that I keep the law all on my own. When the Spirit leads, you're not motivated by rules. You're motivated by relationship. They were walking together. When the Spirit leads, you're motivated by connection, not rules. Jeremiah, the prophet, he declares, this is the new covenant that I will make with the people of Israel. He said what? I will put their instructions, I will put their law, and I'll write it on their hearts. I'm going to connect it in such a way that it stays with them all the time. It's no longer going to be external. It's all going to be internal. And when I write it on their hearts... That's when I'm going to be their God, and they will be my people. We will be connected. We will be in relationship. We will be in covenant when I write their law on their hearts. Saints of God, we are, the only way we're going to stay on this walk is if we stay connected to the Spirit. Not to earn our salvation, but because we love God and want to honor him. Go ahead and start playing. Saints of God. I don't need anybody moving at this time except the ushers. And I want the ushers to quickly pass out the papers that I have for everybody. Because it's time for us to leave this flesh life that we've been living in our own strength. And it's time to start walking in the spirit. You don't have to stay trapped. You don't have to remain in this cycle of sin, confess, sin, confess, sin, confess. You don't have to keep those carnal heart habits. It's time for everybody under the sound of my voice. So long as you understand what I'm saying. Even those that are watching online. It's time to take a long walk in the spirit. A never-ending walk in the Spirit. A walk that's unhurried. A walk that is repeated. A walk that may have some struggles. But so long as you remain led by the Spirit, you're going to come out all right. So this is my appeal for us today as the ushers are passing out those papers quickly. Holy Spirit, have your way. The text says... They which do these works of the flesh shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Thank you. Not as a warning, but as a matter of fact. That this is not who you are. Pastor talked about it. This is not your identity when you're walking in the spirit. You're not going to be an adulterer when you walk in the spirit. That's a promise. You're not going to be an idolater when you walk in the spirit. That's a promise. You're not going to be thinking unclean thoughts when you walk in the spirit. That's a promise. It's not necessarily a warning. It's a promise. It's a message of hope. That when you walk in the spirit, you're not going to be given over into drunkenness. That's a promise. When you walk in the spirit, you're not going to be giving in to hatred and envy. That will no longer be your identity when we choose to walk in the spirit. It's impossible for a true believer to continually, habitually act in the flesh. That's the message of hope. So I want us to spend some time searching our hearts. Because if any of these things are the norm in our life, if any of the thing, these things are a pattern in our life, 
If any of these things are, are commonplace, today is the day not to harden your heart, but to repent and accept God's forgiveness and cleansing today. So my prayer from the front row all the way to the back row, I'm going to even, once, once everybody gets it, ushers, if you could even give it to the, to the musicians today, even to the people that are working on the media team. I don't want anybody exempt today from receiving this cleansing, from receiving this opportunity to repent of these, these, these areas where we routinely mess up. My prayer is that everybody here will ask the Holy Spirit to reveal what's grieving our hearts and how damaging it is to our souls. So once everybody receives it, musicians, I'll give you permission to just hop off of your instruments for a, a couple minutes and just spend some time reflecting even yourself. And let the Holy Spirit work on our hearts right now. I'm going to read out the questions for those that are watching online. But I want us all to be reflecting. Spirit of the living God, move in this place. Please reveal what's grieving your heart right now. The questions say for those that are watching online, do you routinely commit adultery? Do you routinely live in fornication? There should be no movement now, please. Do you routinely allow yourself to think unclean thoughts? Do you routinely overindulge in sexual sins and gluttony? Do you routinely give your heart and devotion in idolatry to other things beside Jesus? Do you routinely run from the truth like those who participated in witchcraft? Do you routinely allow hatred to thrive inside your heart and your soul? Do you routinely exhibit a bitterly mean spirit that is consumed with its own self-interests? Do you routinely permit yourself to be jealous and resentful and envious of what others possess? Do you routinely lose your temper, fly into a rage, and give way to destructive outbursts? Are you routinely so self-consumed that you are blinded to the desires or needs of others? Do you routinely rebel and live in defiance to authorities or show yourself to be disloyal? Do you routinely act as if you and your exclusive clique are superior to other people? Do you routinely begrudge other people's belongings, accomplishments, relationships, or titles in life? Do you routinely and deliberately allow your flesh to freely follow its temptations? Do you routinely live for the next moment of fleshly pleasure? Speak to our hearts, God. Lord, I confess that I've committed the sin of adultery. God, we confess that we have committed the sin of sexual immorality, of promiscuity. God, we confess that we have committed the sin of idolatry, God, of sorcery, 
of hatreds, strife, God. We commit, Lord, we confess that we have committed the sin of jealousy, of anger. God, we confess that we have committed the sin of outbursts and anger and selfish ambitions and envy, oh God. We confess today, Lord, that we have committed the sins of drunkenness and riotous living and all kinds of sins, oh God. We confess them before you now, Lord. And right now, God, we want to thank you for your forgiveness right now, Lord. We thank you for your cleansing that is taking place even in this moment right now. We thank you for the forgiveness and cleansing that is happening now, Father. Your word says that when we create a clean heart, God, you come in and restore the joy of our salvation. Father, help us to put aside the works of the flesh. Help us, oh God, to put aside the works of the flesh once and for all. Teach us, God, to walk in the Spirit. May each one of us, may our heart's desire be to know you better and to walk with you. Help us to move forward in the spirit and not to go back. Ushers, if you don't mind bringing up, uh, bringing up the, the baskets, and for those that want to bring up these papers and maybe tear them up and leave them here, or if you want to keep it to continue to meditate it on, meditate it on throughout the rest of the day, that's up to you. But symbolically, if there's somebody that wants to take these papers and rip it as a sign of saying that the flesh, the works of the flesh is done once and for all. Those are the two baskets, if they can come up here real quick. We'll empty them out so you can use them for offering. And once the baskets come up, those that are willing, if you feel so inclined, if you feel so led, as a sign, let's say, I'm done with this. <laughs> I'm done with this sin. I'm going to leave it at the altar today. And if you want to keep it, that's okay, too, to continue to meditate on it. That's fine as well. You can just leave it at the right here, and they can come and put it up. Thank you. Hallelujah. They can come to the altar. Those that want to bring it to the altar right now, you can do that. Tear it up as a sign of saying, I am done with this thing. I hear the tears. Thank you, Lord. And go back to your seat saying, I will not, <laughs> by the Spirit of God, perform the works of the flesh any longer. I decree and declare under the Spirit of God that my flesh is getting weaker in the Spirit. Thank you, Lord. My story is empty and I am available to you and I am available to you those that are in agreement that God has done something today won't you stand with me let's sing the song together Lord I'm available Lord I'm available keep coming to the altar with your stuff that's ripped up in the name of Jesus my will I give to you I'll do what, what you say. Thank you, Lord. Use me to show someone the way. Yeah. To show someone the way. Have your way, oh God. And, and enable me, me to stay. My storage is empty, God. My storage. And I am available to you. Let's sing it one more time. Lord, I'm available. Sing. Lord, I'm available. Yes, God. No longer giving in to the works of the flesh. Why? I give it to you, God. I'll do what you say, oh God. I'll do what you say. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. To show someone the way. To show someone the way. And enable me to say. And enable me to stay.
Hallelujah. My storage is empty. Yes, it is. My storage is empty. And I am available. And I am available. My storage is empty, God sing. My storage is empty. And I am available. And I am available. One more time. My storage is empty. We're available to you, oh God. Yes, God. And I am. Hallelujah. Can I have a few elders come to the altar, please? There may be somebody here today that is in need of special prayer after what we talked about. You want somebody to touch and agree with you. Why don't you just come to the altar quickly, quickly, quickly. You want somebody to touch and agree with you in prayer. They will be happy to pray with you. What stays at the altar, what comes to the altar stays at the altar. If you are in need of special prayer, this is your opportunity to come. Have we been talking about the works of the flesh? No judgment here. You want to be set free. Come to the altar at this time. If there's somebody here that wants to say, I choose to follow Jesus today. I accept him as Lord and Savior and ruler in my life. Today is the day. Harden not your heart. This is an opportunity to choose Jesus. This is an opportunity to rededicate your life to him. There may be somebody here that wants to say, this is the community that I want to be a part of. Grace Community is where I want to place my membership. I invite you to come to the altar at this time as well as a sign of saying, I want to join this community of faith in Jesus' name. My storage is empty. We're praying all over the room, saying, my storage. Anybody in need a special prayer today? Anybody in need a special prayer for healing today? Anybody in need a special prayer for a specific situation that may be happening in your life? Here is your opportunity to seek prayer. Anybody in need of special healing for their families? We will not give in to the works of the flesh today. My storage is empty. And I'm available. And Thank you, Lord. If you need God to move in your life, move in a specific situation. You want to pray that God helps you to walk in the spirit. The word has convicted you today and you want special prayer that God will help you to walk this thing out. So that you will no longer fulfill the lust of the flesh. My storage. My storage. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Continue to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for what has transpired here today. Father, I thank you for Grace Community. Father, I thank you for what you have planned for this church. I thank you for what you want us to do in this community. And I thank you for reminding us, Lord, that the only way that this is going to happen is when we choose to walk in the Spirit. Father, I thank you for the promises that have been reminded to, to us today that when we walk in the Spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Father, I'm asking right now, Lord, that you seal this word with your Holy Spirit, God. The enemy hates the fact that, we, that he's been exposed today. The enemy hates the fact that we have confessed our sins today. And I'm praying, oh God, that you will protect us, that you will send a hedge of protection around each and every one of us right now, oh God. Use us for your glory, God. Use us for your service. Keep us, God, for your glory, God. We want to be used by you. May this be the church that is filled with people that walk in the Spirit, oh God. I 
decree, oh God, that we will be the people that will continue to purge ourselves from the flesh. I pray, oh God, that this will be the church that rises up against the flesh, that will oppose the flesh, that will be contrary to the flesh, oh God. I pray that every ministry, Lord, the elders, oh God, that they will not give in to the works of the flesh. I'm praying for our deacons, oh God, have mercy, Lord, that they will not give in to the works of the flesh. God, I'm praying that there will be no dissension. I'm praying that there will be no envy. I'm praying that there will be no strife in any of our ministries in this church. In the name of Jesus, that is the flesh, oh God, trying to rise up and destroy what you are trying to do. Have your way, oh God, in our church, God, from the pastoral staff. The flesh tries to rise up even amongst the pastors, oh God. But in the name of Jesus, oh Lord, I'm asking that that Pastor Myron will walk in the spirit. I'm asking that Pastor Moore will walk in the spirit. I'm asking that Pastor Johnson will walk in the spirit. I'm asking that even myself, oh God, will choose to walk in the spirit. And as we walk, oh God, may every person continue to walk as well. It is done. It is so in Jesus' name. There is a work that you want to do with the ushers. There's a work that you want to do with the media team. There's a work that you want to do with the greeters. But we have to bring our flesh under subjection. God, may this not be just another worship experience, but may this truly be a turning point. Our young people, oh God, touch our young people, Lord. Touch our teenagers, oh God, who are constantly bombarded with flesh all around them. But Father, I'm praying, Lord, that they will decide from this time forward that they will also walk in the flesh so that they will not fulfill, that they will walk in the spirit so that they will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Father, I pray that our parents will continue to cover their children, that they will continue to pray for the Spirit of God to fill their children every single day. Touch us, Lord. Fill us with your Spirit. And may we be quick to repent. May we be quick to say, I'm sorry. May we be quick to repent. May we be quick to say, forgive me, when we know that we've done something that came out of our flesh. May we not give any space for the enemy to take root in this church. May we not give any space for the enemy to have his way amongst any ministries, amongst any people. Have your way, God. We claim that it is done in Jesus' name. Now, if you agree that we are walking the spirit, can we give God praise? Can we put our hands together and give, no, 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 not a, not a pity clap. But can you open up your mouth and by the spirit of God, give God thanks. Give God praise. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, give God glory. Give God glory. Because it is a promise that the flesh is dead. It is a promise that the flesh is over with. It is a promise that the flesh is done. Give God glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You may be seated in the presence of God. Somebody shout hallelujah.